So here we're going to see how to make a pattern for a radial nerve palsy splint. We start here with a piece of material that's going to be two-thirds the length of the forearm, go up to the dorsal PIP joints of all the digits, a cutout for the MCP joints to allow for active flexion, and the thumb similarly up to the IP joint. We're going to position the patient supported in slight wrist extension. Due to the fact that they have no active wrist extension, it's important that we use something like a flex bar or a pillow to put them in the right position as we mold the dorsal splint. Here I'm being careful to make sure there's plenty of room to allow for active MCP joint flexion so we don't develop any extension contractures. And I'm conforming the splint material closely to the dorsal aspect of the wrist and hand. Next, I'm going to use a finger goniometer just to provide some differentiation between each digit, which will help us when we add the dynamic component to allow for active digital flexion. And it will also pull each finger MCP joint up into this dorsal blocking trough to allow for function of the hand while awaiting radial nerve function. This material is thin and well tolerated by patients as opposed to the traditional dynamic splints with big outriggers for radial nerve palsy and it's much more usable in the long term while waiting for the radial nerve to regenerate. Here I'm demonstrating where the Velcro straps go and next we're going to work on that dynamic finger component using pajama elastic strap one inch thick. Here I'm using the hole puncher to differentiate between each finger. So I'm going to line that up with the splint material soon and poke holes corresponding with those holes I just made in the strap in between each digit. So this will create the troughs for each finger to rest in, similar to those loops that you might get in one of those outrigger kits, except this is just one piece of material, so it's much easier to fabricate and the patient can just slip in and out of this as one unit, as opposed to having each individual finger have to go in its own sling, which can be challenging when you have no active finger extension after a radial nerve injury. So I'm using an elastic cord um, to tie the straps as well. It's important that both the strap and the cord be elastic because that's the part that allows for active flexion. Here you can see the individual troughs we created. And on the patient, you can see active flexion with passive extension provided by the splint material and the elastic strap.